feel like we're in a chat show here, but I'm not sure who the presenter is. <laughs> Meet Erica, the first robot newsreader in the world. You too. Where are you from? I am from Ireland. I love you very much. Oh. <laughs> Return to your child's heart. Japan is known for having the largest city in the world in terms of urban and metropolitan areas. Tokyo, which is also known to many as the neon lit city, with neon lit dance parties, anime districts, plenty of izakayas, sushi boat restaurants, hot springs, temples, and shrines. While Japan is also the world's leader in robotics and industrial automation. And then there are love hotels. Anonymous, sensual, injected hotels with wild experiences. We should also mention not for the faint of heart. In fact, some of the wildest themed love hotel rooms are located in Japan. So it would only make sense that being the world's leader in robotics and automation, that humanoid robots generating large amounts of money played a big role in the economy. From working in multiple restaurants from Tokyo to Osaka, sex doll brothels, hotel staffs, and even entertainment venues, Humanoid robots in Japan are generating massive amounts of money for their owners. For instance, the female gynoid robot Erica, who starred in the 2020 sci fi film B, which was a $70 million production about a scientist who wanted to create the perfect human DNA. Invitably, things go wrong. And his creation, the Erica Gynoid, is forced to flee the lab in the film. In fact, Erica's celebrity status is said to be able to generate her own worth with a single television appearance or interview, which is around $250,000, and which is also around the same large sum of money it would cost if she were for sale, given her celebrity status, of course. While other not-so-famous robots working in brothels around Japan are said to be able to generate income such as $6,000 to $10,000 a day, which is also the figure you can expect if you own a busy restaurant in Tokyo, generating upwards of $150,000 a week in food sales with patrons lined up outside for multiple hours just to get a bowl of delicious ramen noodles, served to your table, of course, by a humanoid robot. Of course, however, your robot server would be of the wheeled variety. However, not discriminating. Though, of course, pushing for the advancement of humanoid robots to one day walk among us. Fully autonomous, Building relationships with us, just like in the movies. Brain time. Congratulations, you made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck? And all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video. I've been making a lot of videos recently on my channel about humanoid robots and artificial intelligence. And as I was doing some research the other day, I came across this article about the rise in automation and robots stealing jobs, as well as the people affected due to the rise of more efficient technology, which is strange in a way that 
it seems like everyone likes to stand up for the robots. For instance, post-apocalyptic scenarios only happen in films, and surely humans would never build robots that would surpass humans. And further, robots are here to assist us, not replace us. Yet, here we are. Has technology finally gotten the best of us? Well, we can't really blame everything on the advancement of technology. For instance, when we think of scams and the cyber web, it's usually people behind the scams and not the machines themselves. This story is a classic case. Blame it on the advancement of technology or blame it on the people manipulating something new. You be the judge. Check this out. A seven on your side story revealed a new type of ATM scam. Thieves, get this, pouring glue into the card reader, forcing victims to use the tap feature, then draining their accounts. And it happened uh, to several Chase Bank customers in San Francisco. It did, but the bank denied their claims. So one victim set out to prove to the bank that he really was scammed. Seven on your side's Michael Finney has his story. Michael. Yeah, the Amazing story from start to finish, actually. The scammers knew that by tapping your card, the ATM transaction window stays open even after cash comes out. Well, if you walk away too early, the thieves step up and start withdrawing money. The bank said there was no proof of any scam. So after losing everything, this young man decided to go get that proof. There was like a card stuck in the ATM. Joey Malarkey recalls how someone stole his money at this Chase ATM. The card slot was glued shut. A man next to him offered help. He says, oh, you have to tap your card because it's been broken. And I was like, oh, dang. Joey tapped his phone, withdrew $60 and walked off. It all seemed normal until he went back to that ATM. And then the same man was there. That's where I was suspicious. As Joey withdrew another $60, the man came closer. He went up to the ATM like right behind me. So I was like, that's not good. Sure enough, Joey later found multiple withdrawals from his account. $1,640 gone. I'm like, that happened to me. That guy scammed me last night at the ATM machine. I didn't think anything of it. I thought he was just using the ATM. My initial reaction was, wait a second. I definitely did not withdraw that much money. The same thing happened to several customers at that ATM. They put glue in the card reader of the ATM machine. A bank manager told victims that scammers pour glue into the slot so victims have to tap instead. By tapping, the transaction window stays open, even after the cash comes out. If a customer walks off without closing the window, a thief can step up and withdraw more money. I called them maybe 20 times within the span of that week. Chase Bank rejected Joey's claim, just as it denied other victims, ruling that they authorized the withdrawals. And they just pretty much said, you don't have any proof of these claims. Bankers told Joey he must have taken the money since he tapped his phone at the ATM. Since I didn't report my phone missing, that I must have made these charges, which was not true at all. The bank refused to check the surveillance video to see who really took out his money. They said the police have to request the surveillance video. They need like a subpoena. And so Joey took matters into his own hands. He made his own video. Every time I walked my dog, I would just look to see if he was there. And he was there one time. From across the street, Joey saw the same man lurking at the ATM. Secretly, he shot this video. He says it shows the man scamming someone else. I told them, I told Chase, hey, I have this video. Is this proof? And they said, no, just because you have proof of them doing it to someone doesn't mean it happened to you. We contacted Chase Bank. It reviewed Joey's case, and this time he got a refund. The bank also refunded other scam victims, but has not said how it investigates these scams, telling us we are making changes to our ATMs to protect our customers. I was super surprised because I tried so hard to get that money back. Consumer advocates tell us banks are required by law to conduct a full investigation. They are not allowed to simply ignore important evidence like surveillance video. Now, if you lose money and your bank refuses to look at all the evidence, you let me know about it. I'm getting people their money back. Yeah, it's right. stunning. Thank goodness you're doing that because mm. they wouldn't have gotten their money back. No, I unbelievable. Wow. Thank you, Michael. Sure.